Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Thanks for joining me today. Today I will do a little bit of a different video for you. I will do a do's and don'ts video focused on colored pencil and then a realistic drawing. So I will explain my, my don'ts that I found uh, through the years of working with colored pencil and the do's. So the things that do work and the things that don't really work if you're trying to um, create a realistic drawing. And I hope you'll find it helpful. So I will do uh, this video mostly real time. Maybe I'll speed up the boring parts, but most of it will be real time. So if you want to draw along and get a feel for um, the techniques I'm uh, explaining, feel free to do that. Also, before I start, um, if you like this video, please share it because it will it will help my channel. Your support means a lot and my channel could use a little bit of a boost. So if you like this video, please share it with your artist friends and I'd really appreciate it. All right, let's get started. So I will explain five do's and don'ts. The do's will be, no, the don'ts will be here. So let's write that down. With a red colored pencil, of course. I'm using Faber Castell colored pencils on Kenson 1557 paper, as always. So here we will have the don'ts. And then the do's on the right side. All right, let's get started. So the first don't is uh, something that I see a lot with beginners, and that is too much pressure right away. So if you start layering and you're putting down too much pressure, like this, you saturate the paper too quickly, which means that you can't add a lot of layers on top. And this, this effect of too much pressure, it occurs when you hold the pencil too close to the tip. So right, like I'm doing right now. If you're holding it too close to the tip, you add too much pressure, kind of automatically already. So layering like this with a very heavy hand, it is okay if you're doing like coloring books and you just want an area to be one color. So this is okay if you want to do that, but if you want to um, create something realistic and add more colors on top, this isn't really the way to go. So that's the first don't. So what you have to do is hold the pencil a bit closer to the end. And this releases the pressure from the paper. And just start off with a light layer. And then you can build, uh, build up the pressure um, as, you go, as you go along. You can always go darker, you can always go heavier, but if you start off this heavy, you can't erase it anymore, and you can't add any colors on top anymore. So for realistic drawing, start off very lightly. Use circular motions if you want to, but make sure you can still see the grain of the paper. So that's the first do, which is, maybe I should write it down. Light pressure. Can you see that? I'll zoom out eventually so you can see everything. 
All right, so that's the first one. Quite simple, but very effective if you apply the layering technique well. And then the second one is quite similar, which is even layering and uneven layering. So the don'ts will be uneven layering. So for instance, let's, let's say that we want to make green. So to make green, you need blue and yellow. Let's start with blue. We want to make green. And the don't of this one will be that the layering is not even. You can see that. I'm just exaggerating it a little bit. You have very dark patches in here, lighter patches. Which will, mean, which will mean, talking is very hard, that when you add yellow on top, you will get some sort of green, but it will be darker in some spots and a lot lighter in some spots, and you will, be st you you will, st you will still be able to see some of the paper showing through here and there. And this is very exaggerated. Um, feel free to do this too, because it's very fun to see the difference. You, you will learn from it, even if you exaggerate it this much. So you can see a little bit of a green hue here, but it's not green. It's very patchy. So that's a real don't if you try to create a realistic layer and if you try to mix colors. All right, so I'm doing it. The second way, in the do, starting off with blue again, but starting off a bit lighter, and I keep my hand in a very even position, and I work for my um, for my arm. So I don't move my wrist a lot; I just move my arm, which creates a more even layer throughout the area. kind of having fun with this. I don't do these types of videos a lot because I feel like they're already made, but I just wanted to try it, see what you think of it. Right, so I'm just building this up slowly. You can still see the grain of the paper which doesn't really matter right now. I just want to make sure that the layer is even. All right, so that's enough blue for now. I'm taking the yellow and I'm going to apply this on top of the blue in the same way. Circular motions working from my shoulder and my arm. And the colors I'm using here, by the way, this is cadmium yellow, number 107, and this is um, light phthalo blue 145, in case you want to use the same colors. Carefully applying this. And uh, you can still see the grain of the paper, which allows you to add more layers. So I will probably go on top with more blue after this and fill up the tooth of the paper. So, so you can see the green now, it's a nice green tone.
Let's go back in with some blue. You can also change the type of green with this. So if you want it to be a bit more cool, add more blue. If you want it to be warmer, add more yellow. So this is also a bit of a demonstration on how to mix colors. But this is basically it. And then to really complete it, I would go on top with a white carandash and burnish this uh, area so that you really lose the grain of the paper. But this dew is about even layering. So this is basically it. You can see the difference. This really looks like green. Maybe add a little bit more yellow to it. And this looks more like two colors combined in patches. So that's the second one. Even layering. All right, let's move the paper down for the third one. All right, so number three is also a very important one in realistic drawing, which is using a sharp point. The don't would be using a dull point to add details. So let's say I want to draw a flower. I'm going to draw a very childish looking flower, but just to demonstrate, this is num this is Caput Morton Violet 263. And I'm just going to demonstrate. So I'm going to draw a flower and I want it to be very nice and detailed. Wow, such a masterpiece. I'm really doing my best now to find a sharp edge on this pencil, but it's very dull. Which means my lines are pretty crooked. So this is the effect that you would get. Um, the lines are quite thick, it's not that bad, but it could be a lot better. So what you have to do is get a good sharpener. This is my favorite, um, the Faber-Castell Color Grip, which works really well, really well. And make sure you always use sharp pencils when adding small details on colored pencil drawings, especially when you get to like the final layers. So this is good enough because it will really help with adding very small thin lines. I'm going to do my best to make this flower as ugly as the other one to get a fair comparison. You can see that as soon as the pencil gets a bit more dull, like right here, that it, it changes the lines right away. You can see the difference, right? So this is a dull point, sharp point. The lines are much sharper. Very good demonstration, but it's a very important one. It's hard to demonstrate on a blank piece of paper. But apply this to your own drawings when you get to the final layers, which is um, sharp point. 
point. All right, number four, also very important, and that is work from light to dark. So I often see when in uh, with beginners that they start off quite dark right away. They start off too dark and then they make a mistake and then it's too late to erase anything because dark colors are quite hard to erase. So the don't would be, they go right in with the dark color And then they make a mistake, whoops, too dark. And then trying to erase it, which is almost impossible. You will still be able to see your mistake when you go this dark with quite a heavy pressure as well. So with colored pencil on white paper, I would suggest to always build up from light to dark. Start off with the lightest color that you can see on your reference photo, for instance, and then build up with the light hand. Then when you make a mistake, whoops. Still, colored pencil is very hard to erase, but much easier when you make a mistake with the light color. So when I draw brown fur, for instance, I would start out with a beige or with a warm gray. Just put down a light layer of that and then work my way towards the browns. So I would not go in with the dark brown right away. And then I would end with the darkest color. When you work this way, you also get a more deeper color, which looks quite nice most of the time. And then you can add more pressure. If you're sure that everything is in the right place, you can Add more pressure. And eventually you will get the same effect, but with a bit of a deeper color and less of a risk to um, make a mistake and not being able to erase it. You might have to stir when that happens, which you don't want. So work from light to dark, and that's number four. Trying to be quick with this. I don't want the video to be too long. Work from light to dark. And then moving on to the last one. All right, so the very final do and don't would be to erase your pencil sketch. So the don't would be to not erase your pencil sketch enough. So let's say you have made a sketch which you want to use as a guide. Um, your sketch you mainly, most of the time you do in graphite. So let's say this is my this is my sketch. But it is too dark. So um, if you make your pencil sketch too dark, you first uh, firstly won't be able to erase it, which means that you will be seeing the pencil sketch through your colored pencil drawing, especially when you use a lighter color. For instance, 
Let's find a nice light color. Here, light flesh. For realistic drawing, this is not very good because um, real life objects don't have dark outlines around them. So if you do a pencil sketch and you want to use it as a guide, make sure it is as light as possible so you won't be seeing it eventually after the drawing is done. So here you can still see the pencil sketch through the colored pencil. And even if you go on top with the darker color, see this red? The graphite still shows through. Which is very annoying. It's also the case on pastel mat. So if you work on pastel mat with colored pencil, also make sure that the sketch is super, super light. So the do would be to first use a lighter hand when you sketch. Trying to get the circle in there, but it's not as easy actually. So that's my circle. Then lighten it up as much as possible. So you don't want to see the sketch that much. So erase it with a kneaded eraser or another eraser until the sketch is almost completely vanished. And then you can start using the colored pencil on top. So you can also tap. That will take off some of the pencil, but it will not um, completely erase it. So right now, you probably won't be able to see it very much anymore. I can still see the lines a little bit. And then you can use a colored pencil. And when taking a darker color, you won't be seeing the the graphite lines anymore. So that's the final tip, which is also a very important one. It will um, prevent a lot of frustration because you don't want ugly graphite lines in your colored pencil work. Um, at least um, if it's your goal, then that's no problem. But if you want the colored pencil drawing to look realistic and to be 100% colored pencil, make sure that your graphite lines are hardly visible. So um, use light pencil sketch. And that is basically it. So let's um, walk these through. Again, let's zoom out a little bit. So these are all five do's and don'ts. So these are my personal do do's and don'ts. If other artists made these videos and had the same ones, um, then that's a coincidence because I didn't watch any of these videos. Um, these are the ones I, ca I came up with. And these are very general. So if you apply all these don'ts, light pressure, even layering, sharp tip, working from light to dark, and use a light pencil sketch, 
If you apply these to your um, colored pencil work, it will make it a lot easier to get a realistic effect and um, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter which uh, subject. So you can apply these to all subjects. So that's it. I hope you found this one informative. It was a bit different from usual videos, so let me know if you liked it. And um, if you have any questions, please um, insert them below in the comments and then I will answer as much as I can. If you are interested in my real-time animal drawing tutorials in colored pencil, you can become a member of my Patreon site. There's a link in the description. I'd love to see you as a member. And uh, yeah, then I will thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.